Bitcoin, crypto, is there any hope left for the markets? Well, in today's video, I've got some interesting charts that I wanna share with you. I wanna talk about what happened to Luna's 80,000 Bitcoin. Talk about just who has been buying Bitcoin recently. The answers might just surprise you, as well as some pretty wild adoption news, actually. It appears that 44 countries are considering adopting Bitcoin. You heard that right. 44 freaking countries considering adopting Bitcoin. This is wild, wild news. I'll be covering that in today's video. So make sure to stick around till the end to get all of the goods. My name's Lark. I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you do like that topic, you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening in crypto, a little tap on the thumbs up button to let me know. That would be much appreciated. By the way, every single week, my team and I make Wealth Mastery. It's a cryptocurrency investor report. People absolutely, absolutely love it. You'll absolutely love it. And it's free to sign up to get regular insights coming to your inbox, as well as access to our crypto library, which is jam-packed full of all kinds of awesome stuff, reviews, tips, tricks, and much, much more. Sign up using the link in the description. Now, Let's go ahead and take a quick look at a few charts here to get started off before we get into the news. So Bitcoin has now left its rare zone of being oversold on the RSI on the daily. So we were there for just a few short days. Could go back down. Market's pretty rough right now. The sentiment, the macro scene, everything going on in global markets. We could definitely see Bitcoin become oversold again in the not so distant future. But Historically, this has actually been a pretty rare signal for Bitcoin to put in. It usually only happens about once a year or so. So based on that historical pattern, having bought Bitcoin, well, over the last few days, probably not such a bad idea in the long run. The question is, did you buy Bitcoin when it was oversold a few days ago? I did. I'm sure quite a few of you did as well, but do let me know in the comment section if you did buy some Bitcoin, stack some sats over the last few days when it was oversold. Now we did get our death cross happening finally on the three-day charts for Bitcoin. Now, this is an interesting thing. It's only happened twice in Bitcoin's history. Once back in uh, 2018, before that, uh, 2014, 2015, uh, approximately. So our new death cross has just happened. What's interesting is that uh, last time it took about three weeks approximately for Bitcoin to bottom out after the death cross happened. Uh, so that's eight bars, but on the three day chart. So 24 days, right? Um, be curious to see what plays out for Bitcoin over the next few days, because we actually already just had a massive price collapse. Now, same thing back in 2018. It took actually 30 days for the price of Bitcoin to find its, you know, generational bottom uh, back there in 2018 after the death cross happened on the three-day chart. Now, look, I know the death cross is a lagging indicator, et cetera, et cetera, but you got to look at these historical trends and what that has meant. It meant the market was freaking cooked, but that it actually ended up becoming more cooked afterwards. My thought, though, is that we've already seen this massive drawdown hitting a potential peak low price uh, the day before the death cross. That did not happen in the previous death cross examples. So have we already seen the worst of the sell-off? Well, food for thought. Anyway, again, I think there's a lot of macro headwinds that we're fighting with right now. The dollar is rallying, inflation remains high, lots of fears in the market, Fed's trying to crash the market, all that fun kind of stuff. We also, of course, did just put in our seventh weekly red candle for Bitcoin. Well, you're living in historical times. Congratulations, you are here for this. This is a, a new, new record for Bitcoin. Our previous record was six straight red weekly candles that happened back in 2014. So it's been a long time since the market has been this damn consistently bearish without any kind of a significant price rally. Hopefully, of course, we end this week green. That would definitely be nice, but you know, people are freaking out out there in crypto land, but wow, regardless, history has been made. Seven straight red charts. I mean, Statistically speaking, we're due for a green candle here. 
Come on, Bitcoin. Let's see if we can get it up this week, man. I also want to share this chart with you, which we did share before, but I think it's just super interesting to point out here because we did now hit it. So this is uh, the Bitcoin Confluence floor model. Now, previously, we can see back here, came down, marked the bottom of the bear market. We can see here, marked the bottom of the bear market. We can see here, marked the bottom of the bear market. We can see the COVID crash. There we go. And the fifth time it has ever touched on this indicator a couple days ago. That's fascinating, isn't it? Hmm. Very, very interesting. Does that mean the bottom is in? We shall see, of course. Obviously, there's still a lot of uh, potential for us to go down to $22,000 as a lower limit here on uh, the price of Bitcoin. That, of course, convenes with the previous areas of major price support. It's the next big price support down. It also um, comes together with the 200-week simple moving average. A few other charts uh, show us as a really putting the bottom of the bottom in around 22k anything below that is just complete carnage and devastation and uh yeah we'll see if we get there or not but um this is definitely interesting to see that this model which has previously shown when bear market bottoms come in hit for a fifth time definitely interesting now let's get into the news so luna sold their bitcoin that's good news what we suspected they were doing. They have confirmed that they did do that. They sold uh, more than 80,000 Bitcoin. They have 313 Bitcoin left after selling off truckloads of their Bitcoin, trying desperately to plug the leaks in their sinking ship, which obviously did not work because UST has gone to oblivion. Luna has gone beyond oblivion. The good news here, though, is that we don't have to worry about Luna selling their Bitcoin anymore. They sold it. They probably were part of the reason that Bitcoin got down so low the other day. And now that 80,000 Bitcoin, that multi-million, a billion dollars of sell pressure, it's not there. They don't have it to sell anymore. So that's good news. That's good news, I think. But who was buying their Bitcoin as they were offloading it into the market? Well, we definitely did see a strong accumulation trend here, as pointed out by Glassnode. As prices declined towards the realized price at $24,000, a large portion of the market appears to have seen value in Bitcoin and added to their Bitcoin balance. So you can see here, this was a dark purple showing a very high trend score here for accumulation. So we had low accumulation happening back here couple weeks ago and we had very strong accumulation happening on the 12th the 13th the 14th and the 15th all putting in very strong accumulation trend scores showing people were buying up the freaking dip man also want to share this one with you this is the accumulation trend by wallet cohort so you can see the biggest buyers of bitcoin People with less than one Bitcoin in their wallet. That's retail. That's regular people out there buying Bitcoin. That's awesome news. Second biggest buyers were people with one to 10 Bitcoin in their wallets. So, you know, a little more serious investors got a little more cash on hand, but still largely what we consider to be the retail investing crowd. Now, the 10 to 100 Bitcoin also saw some increases, not as strong buying as the under one and the one to 10 Bitcoin holders, totally skipping over the 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 10,000. Those whales seem not to be very interested at all in buying Bitcoin the last few days. Although what's very interesting, mega whales, that is whales with more than 10,000 Bitcoin, they were buying Bitcoin. They're the third biggest group buying Bitcoin during this dip. So people were accumulating Bitcoin during that big sell-off. We also saw institutions pouring $300 million into Bitcoin funds during the meltdown over the last few days. 
So that's pretty gosh darn interesting too. Now this is, look, institutions put money into a lot of places when it comes to Bitcoin and there was a lot of uh, indication that a lot of Bitcoin was sent into Coinbase and taken off of Coinbase, which is likely institutional buyers. But we also can see that $300 million did go into Bitcoin funds during this whole big market situation, showing the institutions looked at the market and thought, damn, Bitcoin seems to be a good buy right now. So we had big whales, we had retail, we had institutions all buying Bitcoin over the last few days. I think that's a pretty good signal that a large enough portion of the market looked and went, wow, Bitcoin's on sale, I need to buy some. Now let's get into some adoption news to finish up today's video with. Emirates is starting to accept Bitcoin or will be starting to accept Bitcoin very soon uh, for flights, which is pretty cool. Actually, I like flying on Emirates. It's a great airline. Um, I usually have to fly on one of the Middle Eastern airlines to get from here in New Zealand to visit family in uh, Russia or to visit family in the States. I guess I can go across the ocean either way. But anyway, I fly through the Middle East frequently enough and Emirates is a great airline to fly on. So you know what? I may actually spend some Bitcoin on a flight one of these days just to do it. I guess I'll have to make a video about it when I do it because, you know, if you don't make a video about it, it didn't happen, right, Lark? Okay, anyway, so that's pretty cool news. Cool adoption is one of the world's biggest airlines adopting Bitcoin for payments. It's awesome. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. Brazilian Bank is now offering Bitcoin to their 53 million customers, man. Yes, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's an incredible adoption story. And they're also putting 1% of their treasury into Bitcoin. So not only are they personally Bitcoin believers, but they're letting 53 million of their customers get access to buying Bitcoin as well. That's an amazing adoption story. Brazil's been just nailing it out over the last year to 18 months with adoption stories from cryptocurrency regulation to launching Bitcoin ETFs to this story here. There was also a big broker with 3.5 million customers that also started offering Bitcoin to their clients in the last few days. Like huge stories coming out of Brazil, one of the world's biggest economies. This is a damn important trend to be keeping an eye on because as we see Brazilians coming into the market, they're going to bring a serious amount of capital into the market with them. And this kind of story 53 million customers, you have to understand, that puts this Brazilian bank to suddenly be one of the biggest by number of users, institutions, uh, selling Bitcoin. I think, you know, Coinbase has, what, 90 million customers or something like that. A few of the other big exchanges are pretty similar. So this is probably going to be like a top 10 by customers place to buy Bitcoin. It's a big story. Final story for today, which is a really, really big story. President of El Salvador continuing to rep Bitcoin like a boss. This story boggles my freaking mind. Currently, he is hosting a conference with 32 central banks and 12 financial authorities totaling 44 countries to talk about Bitcoin, how these countries can adopt Bitcoin. Look. This list of countries is an absolute who's who's of basket case countries, of countries whose currencies suck, of countries who have been oppressed by the global Western-led financial system that has put capital controls on these countries. The IMF has come in and devastated these countries. These countries are the countries that I feel like Bitcoin was created for. These are the countries that desperately need technology like Bitcoin. Their citizens could benefit so much from adopting Bitcoin. And look, those changes don't happen overnight. Everybody's points out Salvador and OSC, it's not instantly revolutionized the country and everything's not perfect now. It's not a perfect paradise. Things take time. Financial inclusion takes time. Building a digital economy takes time. Banking the unbanked takes time. Look what El Salvador did. 70% of people in El Salvador now have a Bitcoin wallet, but only like, what, 20% have a bank account? They have banked the unbanked in El Salvador already. Central African Republic, second country to get on board. But let's just take a quick look at some of the countries here that are adopting or have come to this conference in El Salvador to talk about getting their countries to adopt Bitcoin. Now, this is mostly in Africa. 
So we see a lot of uh, African countries on the list here from Egypt up in the north and just right on down through the southern parts of the country to get to you know Angola and Namibia. So a lot of a lot of countries from Africa have come over to El Salvador to talk about Bitcoin and to figure out how they can potentially adopt Bitcoin in their countries. Madagascar as well. We come over here into uh, Asia. We see Armenia, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh. Big countries, big populations, big potential for adopting Bitcoin in some of these places. Come over here to South America. We have Paraguay and Ecuador. Also up here in the Caribbean, we have uh, Haiti, a few countries in Central America as well. Tonga didn't show up. Tonga's talked a lot about adopting Bitcoin, and I'm sure that they will at some point. But they did not come to this particular meeting. But wow, just absolutely crazy. So many countries coming together to talk about how they can adopt Bitcoin. Now look, maybe all 44 of these countries go home and say, you know what, that's a big crock of crap and we're not going to adopt Bitcoin. I doubt it. I doubt it. Some of them will, absolutely. But some of them are going to go home and go, man, this is an opportunity. We need Bitcoin. We need to get off U.S. dollar dependence. We need to get out of the Western-led, abusive, oppressive financial system that has kept us out of the global financial system, essentially, for decades. Bitcoin offers these countries a, a new beginning in terms of being global financial uh, economic entities. It's very, very exciting. Look, if only a handful of these countries adopt Bitcoin, it's epic beyond belief. So if at the end of this we only get, I don't know, Paraguay and Madagascar and Armenia and Bangladesh to do it, that's huge, huge beyond belief. Because you know what? Next year, some of those countries that came this year, they're going to sit down and think, man, those other guys that we were sitting down having, having cocktails with and talking about Bitcoin with, some of those guys did it and they're okay. In fact, they're doing better now. Why didn't we do it? We should do it too. And then other countries will look at their neighbors and go, hey, those guys did it. Maybe we should do it too. A movement is building and it's unstoppable. And you have to look beyond the price because the price just screws you up. You look at the price and go, oh, everything's terrible. Everything's falling to pieces. The fundamentals have literally never been better. And we are on the precipice of mass adoption for cryptocurrencies in a way that people couldn't even imagine a few years ago. I'm holding my Bitcoin. I'm going to keep stacking sats. Thank you very much. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by to listen to me talk about cryptocurrencies today. Let me know your thoughts about any of this stuff down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video and peace out till next time.